dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Jeff Chandler in Once to Every Man, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you very much, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where all the great names of the motion picture world come to join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is that talented actor, Jeff Chandler, and the title of our drama, A Story of a Troubled Mind That Finds Itself Through Its Own Denouncement, is called Once to Every Man. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here is your announcer with this important message. Young men and women, here is your opportunity for an important new career in aviation. Today's best deal for the aviation beginner is in the United States Air Force. No experience is needed, and you earn good pay while you learn. The Air Force will give you the best aviation technical training, opportunity for steady advancement, security, and good retirement benefits. If you're 18 to 34, 17 with parents' consent, find out today how you can begin this important new career. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again, our producer. And now the curtain rises on Act One of Once to Every Man, starring Jeff Chandler as Jeff Sterling. Have you ever been alone in the silence of the night and heard the distant wail of a locomotive like some primeval thing sobbing to a new risen moon? and have your thoughts reach out across the lonely void in futile search for other ears to hear as yours, and other thoughts that journey into fear, to the black and viscid waters of a hidden lake that lies somewhere beyond, remote as a fallen meteor. And did you find we're not alone, that no man can be alone who hears the mystic voices of the night tongues to many ears, and so, Upon the dark train followed its twisting path among the mountains and the valleys, the flanged wheels clucking and chortling at familiar joints and switches. And then the great voice of the train, heard far off as it pants and slows and stops at the tower to refresh its thirst. Hey, sounds like we're in somewhere, Jeff. Unless there's a cow on the rail. Yeah. Slide the door back. Let's have a look. Okay. Yeah, I've been riding this rattle trap long enough to reach any place. What do you see, Jeff? Uh, mostly a big bunch of nothing. Black as spades. Looks like a water tower down the line away, so lights mean anything to you? Yeah. This ought to be the burg they call Terrence. Last water stop for the city. The town's over there somewhere. I was through last year. Oh, what's it like? It's like a pain in the neck. And a first-class invite to the clink. Yeah. Yeah, they got cops with funny ideas. They call guys like you and me vagrants and heave us into the lockup. And take it from me, brother. It ain't no nice lockup either. It crawls. Well, what's a town like, Jimmy? Oh, just a sleepy little joint. A couple of 3,000, I guess. Mostly uh, farming country. Yeah? You suppose a guy could get a job? Yeah, sure. Making little ones out of big ones. Like I said, the uh, cops have funny ideas. They don't like guys like us. They're jealous or something on account of we make out without doing no dopey work. But if a guy wanted to work, Jimmy, I mean, if he was to go ask for a job, would they give it to him? Have you gone nuts? Maybe. Huh? Hey, Jeff, you ain't thinking of... You're kidding. Well, maybe getting a job on a farm wouldn't be so bad, Jimmy. It couldn't be any worse than begging handouts and sleeping in parks. They got butter and eggs and cream on farms, Jimmy. Yeah, and digging fence holes and milking cows and plowing and other stuff I don't want to do and can't even think of. You know, I think maybe I'll take a chance. Ah, oh, don't be a sucker, Jeff. You ain't gonna pull out now. It's only about another 12 hours into the big city. Yeah, but somehow the city don't sound so good. I'd kind of like to sleep in a bed and eat three times a day for a change. 
And beat your brains out being a flunky to some farmer? Oh, Jeff, you ought to go see a nut doctor. I'm still going to take a chance. Why don't you come along, Jimmy? Now I know you've gone off your flaming rocker. Uh-uh. Well, maybe not, Jimmy. Maybe it might feel pretty good to dig around in the ground instead of the gutters. Plant stuff and watch it grow. Being able to walk around without dodging the cops. Eat off plates instead of out of a bean can. I, we'd even earn a few bucks. Huh? What do you say, Jim? I say you sound cockeyed. I thought I had a pal, not a goofy jerk with holes in his head. Okay, Jim. Sorry to break it up, but well, that's how it is. Take care of yourself. Yeah, sure, Jeff. I'll take care of myself. Don't worry about me. Yeah, you just uh, trot along and talk to the pretty cows. Maybe they can make some sense out of you. I can't. And when you got a stomach full, look me up, huh? I'll be around. <laughs> right. Here she goes. Better change your mind. Sure you won't change yours? Nuts. Okay, so long, pal. Don't break a leg when you jump, you jump. I won't. So long. I'll drive you. Uh, I'll drive. Don't in any hurry. What? That's right. You haven't got far to go. The lockup's quite handy. No need to rush. Oh, crap. Yeah, that's right. You didn't use good sense dropping off that train here, son. Folks around Terrence all work for their living. And they don't like lazy people. They reckon it's a good story, that one about the ant and the grasshopper. Uh, I don't suppose you believe this, but you got me picked wrong. Oh, sure, sure, I know. I've got all the tramps picked wrong. Well, it happens I'm not a tramp. At least I'm not one now. Oh, I see you reformed as soon as you saw me, eh? No, no, I'll admit I've been tramping the road for quite a while, but I got off that train to look for a job, to work on a farm. Yeah? Yeah. Why don't you call me a liar? You think it. Uh, maybe. Well, haven't you or the people around here ever seen a person that wants to work? Is he a freak or something? A tramp wanting to work would be a freak, all right. <laughs> I've never seen one. Well, why don't you take a good look? You're seeing one now. What made you choose Terrence to look for work? That is, if you did. Oh, what makes anybody choose anything? Of course, you wouldn't know, would you? You just know I'm another blasted lion tramp to put in a cell so he can lay and rot and lose what little decent ambition he does have. Okay, so you're right. I won't make the same mistake again. Let's go. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, wait a second, son. What for? You lonesome or something? You like associating with tramps? No, no, I don't reckon I do. But I can pick one when I see one. Maybe I did pick you wrong, Sonny. Man can make a mistake, you know. Yeah? Yeah. Tramps don't usually talk like they were educated, because they're not. But you are, and you've had a few bad breaks somewhere. Well? Now, look, Sonny, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm going to believe you. Thanks. Tell me, you've got any money? No. You hungry? I could eat. <laughs> ah, it's almost morning. You know, up on Elm Street on the hill, there's the church. The Parsons is next door. Chap there named Dr. Phillips. He always has an early breakfast on a Sunday morning. And it's a good breakfast, too. And he always likes company. Uh, tell me, what's your name, son? Sterling. Jeff Sterling. Ah, well, I'm glad to know you, Sterling. And I'll be seeing you. I think you like Dr. Phillips. And I... Well, I hope you like Terrence. Thanks. Thanks, officer. Oh, come in, please. Be there in a jiffy. Uh, <clears throat> oh, oh, good morning. Sorry to be screaming out the door, but, uh, but the toast was burning. Oh, uh, that's all right. Is, uh, is Dr. Phillips home? Oh, yes, surely. Uh, well, uh, won't you come in? Uh, that is, if you don't mind walking through the kitchen. Oh, no, I, well, that is, I... Is that you sounding the breakfast call, Pat? Oh, no, Daddy, I was yelling at this gentleman out here. It's someone to see you. Oh, to see me? Oh, how do you do, sir? Uh, good morning. It is one of God's best. Oh, excuse me, the coffee's going to boil over. I don't think I've ever had the pleasure of... Uh, uh, my name's Sterling, Jeff Sterling. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Sterling. Well, I, I was wondering if... Well, that is, if, if you had any work I could do. I mean, any work. My deacons tell me I have plenty of the Lord's work to do. What did you have in mind, Mr. Sterling? <laughs> Nothing, really, Dr. Phillips. I, I only meant to earn a sandwich or something. I mean, I mean well, the cops said that... Oh, Officer Burke, <laughs> that old reprobate. <laughs> Always sending me a pleasant guest for breakfast and never coming around himself. Oh, he's afraid I'll preach, I guess. <laughs> but I've never reconciled ham and eggs with a sermon. Uh, come in, Mr. Sterling. You'll just have time to wash up a bit. Oh, now, look, Dr. Phillips, I don't want to be any bother. If I could just have a sandwich or something, I could eat it out on your porch steps. My, my clothes aren't exactly the kind people sit down to a table. <laughs> clothes, my boy, 
Haven't you heard the famous old axiom? <laughs> Clothes don't make the man. The man's inside, and it's the man inside that I'm interested in. Oh, but I don't want to put her to any bother putting another place at the table, having to go to a lot of extra work. Extra work for Pat? Why, my boy, that daughter of mine dotes on fixing things for other people. She takes to cooking like the proverbial duck takes to water. And if we don't have a guest or two around the house, why, well, she just doesn't know what to do with herself. I'll come along. I'll show you where to go. Thank you very much, Doctor. You're being very kind. Nonsense. I only try to practice what I preach. Pat, put a clean towel in the bathroom and three more eggs. No, no, better make it four more eggs on the griddle. A friend has just dropped in for breakfast. We pause briefly from our story, Once to Every Man, starring Jeff Chandler, to bring you an important message from our government. High school graduates, for a job with a real future, get into aviation now. United States Air Force offers you unlimited career opportunities. Under the new Airman Career Program, you'll be trained in the job for which you are best suited and have the best chance for success. You'll get good pay right from the start, free room and board, free clothing and equipment, free medical and dental care, free retirement plan. This is your big opportunity. Look into it today. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. The curtain rises on Act Two of Once to Every Man, starring Jeff Chandler as Jeff Sterling. How deep is the cask from whence springs the sour wine that makes men bitter? Man, in the never-ending search, is the one sublime enigma. For what man knows what he seeks, what man knows when he finds it. And so is singled out one such man. A seeker for what? He knows not. A man who has come to the village of Terence, hungering for the benison of work, has come to the parsonage house of Dr. Phillips, hungering for the sustenance of food. Thus, all life is a hunger. One eats, and one must eat again. What's that old song, Mr. Sterling? Let's have another cup of coffee and just another piece of toast. Now, now, Daddy, you've had your ration of coffee for one day. Oh, I wasn't speaking for myself, Pat. That is, uh... Ah, uh ah, -uh. thou shalt not. But our friend, Mr. Sterling, my dear, a man doesn't like to drink coffee alone. Oh, thank you very much, Doctor. I'm afraid I've already eaten more than any sane man should. I wish I could tell you how grateful I am. I, I was pretty hungry. We like hungry people in this house. Don't we, Pat? Well, there isn't much pleasure in cooking for someone who isn't. <laughs> <laughs> like preaching a good sermon to a sleepy congregation. It's a waste of time. And speaking of time, it waits for no man. I haven't quite finished my sermon. Will you excuse me? Oh, certainly, sir. Uh, you better use a little more hellfire and brimstone this morning, Daddy. I think Mrs. Curtis is backsliding. Well, I'm afraid Sister Curtis frightens me more than I ever could her. <laughs> <laughs> now, you two just go ahead and chat. I'll be back presently. I'm not trying to be funny, but is your father always like that, Miss Phillips? Uh, what do you mean? You're always like what? Well, I've always thought that ministers were... Well, I mean... <laughs> like a mouthful of persimmon. No sense of humor? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> but why should they be, Mr. Sterling? If a parson is close to his God, why shouldn't he be happy? Surely God knows how to smile. That's a nice thought. Why don't you believe it? Well, I never thought of it, Miss Phillips. You mean you've never thought of God? Well, not for a long time, I guess. I... Could I ask why, Mr. Sterling? Certainly. Simply because I don't waste time thinking about things that... That you don't understand? You can put it that way. Or that you don't want to understand. Why do you say that? <laughs> to reach an understanding of things quite often is a pretty desperate chore. Sometimes it's easier not to bother. It just run away. But Daddy says there's a catch in doing that. What is the catch? That you never really do succeed in running away because you're running away from yourself and that can't be done. And so what happens? You just keep running and running until you fall down exhausted. Oh, not physically, but mentally and spiritually. You think I'm running away from myself? Well, perhaps you're trying to, Mr. Sterling. But things here in Terrence aren't any different than they are anywhere else. Than they are from where you came from, for example. 
It's a very good lecture, but it's old hat. I've heard it before. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to be rude. Oh, you weren't. Look, can I help you with the washing up or chop some wood or something to sort of even the score before I go? Go? Uh, can't you wait and see Dad? I mean, do you have to go? There aren't very many places around Terrence to go on Sunday, but, well, uh, wouldn't you like to stay and go to church and hear Dad's sermon? He's really awfully good. Me go to church? You want the walls to cave in on his head? Oh, I shouldn't let that worry you. Our walls are pretty strong. And, you know, he'd appreciate your staying. He dotes on seeing a new face in the congregation. Please do, Mr. Sterling, and then stay and have lunch. If your father wants me to stay, if listening to him preach, well, if that's the way he wants me to pay for my breakfast, okay, but we'll skip the lunch, thanks. I can think of other ways to earn a meal without hearing about heaven and hell and my awful sins. Now, I don't believe in heaven. I already know about hell and my sins. Well, well they can take care of themselves. That's the way it is, Miss Phillips. So many of the multitude are forgetting that resurrection is for the living as well as the dead. A thing for us, for our world. The resurrection of faith, of the truth, of gentleness and love and tolerance. For things that we must keep forever and eternal. And above all else, the resurrection of that great peace which our Lord gave in his own tears that fell as rain from the cross of Calvary. These priceless things must and will find resurrection in the hearts of men. Well, Mr. Sterling, I was very pleased to see you in church. I must apologize for the choir, however. A few of our best tenors are suffering the grip. How did you like my sermon? I, uh, I'd rather not answer that, Doctor. Why? Was it as bad as all that? You really want to know what I thought of it? Of course, Mr. Sterling. I'm not afraid of the truth. Okay, you asked for it. I thought it smelled. Did you really? That's very interesting. At last, a critic who says what he thinks. Would you tell me why you thought it smelled, Mr. Sterling? Certainly, because it didn't mean anything. Because it was as empty as an old bass drum. Dear, dear. You think standing in a pulpit and saying a lot of pretty words is going to make the people rush out in the street yelling hallelujah and fall all over each other with love and affection? You think it's going to stop hate and greed, stop people from their lying and cheating, from thieving what they want if they're big enough? Love thy neighbor, yeah. Knock him in the teeth, and when he's down, jump on him. My dad loved his neighbor. He loved all of his neighbors. He loved him so much, he killed himself. What happened, son? Look, Dr. Phillips, there wasn't a more gentle, honest, decent man in the world than my dad. He was just an ordinary guy who beat his brains out trying to do as you said this morning, love thy neighbor. He spent his whole life doing things for other people, and in return, what did people do for him? Played him for a sucker. They thought he was just a softy. They just took what he had to give, and when he didn't have any more to give, they were through with him. And when he died, he, he apologized for not having lived a better life. Yeah, apologized, blamed himself for what had happened. That's what I mean, Dr. Phillips, about not going too much for this love thy neighbor stuff. You might be mistaken about your father, Mr. Sterling. Maybe he didn't die such a poor man as you think. Oh, no. The county had to bury him. How poor can a man get? No, Doctor. I don't think you or anybody else can change human nature by preaching two hours once a week. Human nature's a pattern. You or anybody else can't change it. The people themselves have got to change. If I'm going to be any different, I've got to do it myself. I've got to want to do it by myself. It's all got to come from in here, not from out there somewhere. You can't talk of a world as, as something huge and round, something intangible. It isn't. You're the world, and I'm the world, and what you do and I do makes the world what it is. The only thing that can make me reform is me, myself. That's what I mean. Mr. Sterling, that's the finest sermon I've ever heard. Not to preach in a church, is it? Not by me, Mr. Sterling, but by you, if you would. What? Yes, by you. Would you, at a special service this evening? Make a fool of myself? How would you make a fool of yourself? Haven't you the courage of your own convictions? Don't you believe what you said? Are you afraid to tell others what you've just told me? I'm not afraid to scream it from the housetops. Well, then... You serious? I've never been more serious in my life. Are you? Okay, Dr. Phillips. But you better start thinking of another church far away. They won't like you here after tonight. My 
friends, it was my intention to speak to you tonight on a subject which I have considered for some time. However, since completing my sermon, a young friend of mine talked to me of certain things which made me wonder, wondered at him and at myself. I abandoned my sermon and asked my friend to take my place. He is not a minister in the sense of ordination. Perhaps he is more of a minister than we know. My friends, this is Jeff Sterling. All right, Jeff. Ladies and gentlemen, today, as a guest of Dr. Phillips, an uninvited guest, I did things and said things which I guess were quite rude. He, he asked me to tell you what I told him. He asked me to preach a sermon which I've carried around with me for a long time. Well, it, it was a very bitter sermon, but I was willing to preach it. I, I was more than willing. I was anxious. I wanted to tell you, to tell the world just how bitter a man can get. What I didn't know was that all the things I hated was myself. I hated people because I hated myself. I know now that I was the subject of my own sermon. And that sermon should not be heard in the house of God. In fact, it, it'll never be heard anywhere. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Sterling. Well, look, I... uh, does it have to be Mr. Sterling? Couldn't you make it just plain Jeff? All right, Jeff. This morning you said you had some place to go. Do you still feel the same about it? Yeah. This morning I wasn't quite sure where that place was. And tonight you are? I think so. Where, Jeff? It's a place on a hilltop, a place where there are cool green trees and spreading lawns, and where two very wonderful people live. Is it very far away? No. No, it's not very far away now. This morning it was. This morning was a long, long way off. Now it, it's come very close. In fact, it's, it's right here, Patricia. I see. Do you really? Oh, yes, yes, I do, and I'm very glad. I'm very glad that you found the place you were seeking. There might be more here in it than you imagined, too. Well, if there is, I, I know I'll find it. You see, I learned something very important today. I learned one can't seek happiness. He's got to, he's got to be happiness. It isn't a thing that can be found. It's a thing that already is. Your father taught me that. You helped him. I, I guess one might apply the same idea to love. You, you can't seek love. Just be it, and it's there. Yes, Patricia, I've found what I want. My chance came along for the first time in my life. I guess it's a chance that comes once to every man. The curtain falls in the final act of Once to Every Man. Our star, Jeff Chandler, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. High school graduates, there's an important place for you in the U.S. Air Force. You can continue your education, learn a trade, get ahead, and at the same time earn good pay. The United States Air Force has openings for specialists in air transport, aircraft maintenance, research, clerical administration, radio, and many other fields. The Air Force will train you for one of these responsible jobs. Two kinds of training are open to you. You can learn on the job under the world's most skilled experts, or if you qualify, you can go to the finest Air Force technical schools as vacancies exist. You'll find interesting work, job security, good retirement benefits, and opportunity for travel. This is your big opportunity. Look into it today. Get full details at your nearest Air Force base or United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again at the microphone, our star and our producer. Jeff, while you're no stranger to this microphone, I just want to tell you how glad I am that you are starring with us this time. Well, C.P. is practically a regular cast member here. That is, up to a few months ago. I feel pretty good about it myself. You have deserved star billing for a long time. But don't you think, for the benefit of those in our audience who are familiar with your voice, you should tell them where you've been for the past few months? I haven't been where you make it sound. They'll all think I've been up the river or somewhere. All right, I'll straighten it out. Ladies and gentlemen... Jeff has been making a picture in Europe. In Italy. 
in Italy for the past few months with the lovely Marty Torrin, who, like Jeff, is under contract to Universal International. What picture did you make? Well, it's called Deported, scheduled for release in the spring. Outside of Marta and myself, the cast were all Italian actors. I heard you arrived in Naples at 10.30 in the morning and were at work by noon. That's right. We were delayed a little flying over and we had to adhere to a rigid time schedule. Besides, I had to get back for radio commitments. That means that you saw very little of the country. Entirely too little. And when and if I take a vacation, I'm going to go right back. You know, outside of the fair, it isn't an expensive trip. Yes, that's right. Uh, But how was the food? Surprisingly enough, uh, plentiful and excellent. Big, luscious steaks, one dollar. And no one tried to hike prices. People were all wonderful. You looked like you ate well, in spite of a hard schedule. I did, but well, this, this is a great homecoming for me here, C.P. And by the way, what are you planning for your listeners next week? Do I get a part in the cast? You certainly do get a part in the cast, and here's what we're planning for next week, Jeff, and ladies and gentlemen. Richard Denning will be our star, and our play is a romance drama titled The Common Touch. This is the story of a young doctor whose love for his fellow man transcends his desire for wealth and fame. Uh, I'll be on hand to help you do it, and I hope our listeners will like it. So long, C.P. Goodbye, Jeff. We'll be looking for you. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Richard Denning stars in a dramatic story, The Common Touch. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Jeff Chandler appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Kimball S. Sant, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.